I think the biggest turning point for me as a conductor really came from the most. There are two. One of them was when I was a student and I was able to conduct colleagues who were also friends because that was an ability to have criticism that was in a sense without any sugarcoating because a friend can tell you something that a professional colleague might not do. I remember one rehearsal where a friend said, can your upbeat be in the same tempo as you go on uh, after the first beat? And I went, oh yeah, of course it, I, it has to be. But I hadn't been aware that I was you know, making that rather crucial mistake and therefore putting the players into difficulty. So that thing of, of conducting people who really were um, my peers and in a sense my equals probably solidified this sense of approaching the music as not somehow trying to uh, pretend an expertise that I don't have. I am not the person playing and holding the violin. I am not the expert on the violin. The violinist is the expert on the violin. Even though I was a horn player at a professional level, the person holding the French horn is the actual expert here. And so like a research team that is looking at something, although I may have a knowledge of all of the various different fields involved, I would always defer to the specialist in, in the area of whatever it might be, in uh, uh, radioisotopes or in, in uh, viscosity of material. And that allows the whole research team to do the very best job. But I think the second most important thing, having had that, was the experience I was able to garner in Israel when I was working as resident conductor of the Jerusalem Symphony Orchestra, because this allowed me to work with the same players over and over and over again. And that showed me just how much the conversation with musicians is one that, uh, like in any long-term relationship, gets greater in terms of meaning and understanding with repeated contact, so that you no longer try at the first meeting of someone to go to the level of depth that you know you can go to when it's someone you've known for 10 years. And so that helps both keep things in the right perspective when you are meeting a group that is new and also allows you to understand how far you need to really try and reach when you are working with a group that you know very well. Probably the most helpful thing is watching chamber music and seeing how small an amount of indication from a player can line all of the other players up. Because the thing that, that often happens is there's so much going on as a conductor in front of you, you think, I need to control all of these different things. And while it is true that you do need to be completely aware of everything that is going on through study of the score and through oral imagination, you, are, in fact, are there to make sure that the things are all in place, but you're not responsible for them being in place. The players are responsible for having them be there. In the same way that when the violinist you know, does a gesture before they start Bartok 5, it's not as though he's having to convince the other players to get ready. Everyone is already ready, and it's just that that small gesture is all that they need to know that that's the precise moment that says, here are our coordinates. We are all going to meet at a certain place, this street north, that street south, at this particular time of the clock and then everyone gets there, whether they have a low note, a high note, um, a soft attack, or a, a heart attack. And that's all of the, the sort of aspect as a conductor that you really need to think about is how can I show most clearly where the, 
the point is that we all need to meet. I think your approach changes um, over time just because there's, there's so much to know and there's so much as you go forward that you realize you don't know. Um, that you're constantly thinking about how you might do things better. Um, you work on the idea of communication with people and what is making sense. And you're trying to understand more about that all the time. The trick with conducting is that even with the same group of people, from one day to the next, you cannot approach things in a formulaic way because all human beings are in a constant state of flux and change. And so even with the same piece of music in the same hall, with the same musicians, the very next day, there are things that are different. And you are different and they are different and you need to somehow figure out how to get the best out of the entire situation with all of these changing parameters. And that means that um, I think the, the most important thing one learns as one goes on is how to make more do less. So how you, you realize that certain gestures that you might have felt were absolutely essential 10 years ago, in fact, are peripheral and you don't need to include them. Uh, or how certain aspects of preparation ha have been in the past ones that you neglected and realized that that's then where the difficulties came from. And now you understand to get way out in front of some of these things and make sure when you arrive at the rehearsal that you have uh, just extra research in your background so that when certain um, situations arise you are in a much better position to deal with them. And these are things that, that each individual I think learns um, over time. I'm still <laughs> I'm still learning all sorts of things. Um, and much of the time you do feel like a cretin if you're going to uh, be honest with yourself. But there are those moments where uh, something wonderful happens and, and people then give you credit for it. But if you're smart, you know that there are lots of people that you share that credit with. I prepare a new score in a couple of ways. If it is a, um, a kind of style that I might not know, I try and determine if the score is a relatively precise indication of what the style of the music is, meaning is this a type of music and a score where much of the information can be gleaned simply from the perusal of the score. So in a, a sort of hegemonistic sense, I am going to um, look at this score and all that it contains and um, build everything out of that. Or is this a score that is closer to an oral tradition and is therefore more like say a tablature part would be on a guitar where the notes necessarily are not so much indicated as just a manner of playing and then much of the information is going to come from sources outside of the score. If it's, if it's a score that is say more connected up with jazz I will try and find resources that may not be f evident within the score but are connected up to either the kind of people who've been involved with this music or where it's come from geographically or various things like this. If it is a score that is really based entirely on notation, then what I try and do is, in a sense like um, a diver where you're on the surface of the score and, and you don't really know what's underneath the surface of the water, you dive down further and further and further and try and be very aware of the surroundings as you go down to the deepest parts of the score and then come back up. 
or it could be a little bit like um, someone who is analyzing a mechanical object, let's say a, a, a wind-up clock, where you first take it apart into its um, largest components. So this might be breaking it up into, all right, it has several movements, or it's in one movement, but here are the larger sectional parts of the composition. And then you start breaking those down into smaller bits. So that's a slightly Cartesian way of looking at things, where you um, are, are ever so slightly breaking the things apart into their smallest atoms and then you gradually start to put it back together so that you have a sense not only of how the whole fits together but also why each small part is playing its role in making the overall object function. Well, a musical horror story um, there was one time which was kind of funny. I was working at the Opera House of La Scala, and a conductor had come through with the Vienna Philharmonic the day before, and he had worked with the stage director uh, quite closely on a number of operas. And I was standing right next to the stage director in a box behind the stage where the conductor enters, and as this conductor came out, getting ready to do Schubert's Unfinished Symphony, which is a very poetic and deep piece. And the key of B minor has a kind of mystery about it. And it's an absolute masterwork. And I can understand being very concentrated because you are going to conduct the Vienna Philharmonic, which is kind of like, you know, right up there with Everest and K2 as far as orchestras are concerned. But they were tuning up and the conductor came in and he was no more than three or four feet away from this colleague that he had worked with many times. And the colleague was standing there kind of waiting for him to notice him and say, hello, oh, how nice that you're here. But he was so in the zone. He was so much in the great art zone that he didn't notice anything else and went out on stage and conducted. And the next day at our performance, the I would always go up on stage and there were mimes who did dancing and various things and the chorus were all assembled and I would go and just talk to the singers and check in if I hadn't seen them in their dressing room just is everything okay is your voice feeling you know just check in and joke around with people before going down stage into the pit and the stage manager said maestro why are you not in the great philosophical area of art like this conductor yesterday and I said because you never know when um, something might happen. And so I am in a different kind of zone. And sure enough, that was the performance where one of the brass players made a wrong entrance and all of the other brass players had that player's cue in their part. And so the entire brass section in the performance was one whole bar different than the rest of the orchestra. And I had to negotiate the people dancing and singing on stage and all of the orchestra playing and a complete brass section in the wrong bar of the score. And I managed to get everybody back and it went on and we had no problems. But one of the things that taught me is that our job is artistic, but it may suddenly become triage and we may have to get very practical very quickly. And so it's really important to always have a great sense of the reality of what it is we are doing, even if at certain moments we have these incredible flights of inspiration and fancy, keep yourself firmly with both feet on the ground. Oh, there's a couple of things that you could say would be solid advice for new conductors. The first thing is um, try and conduct anything that moves. Really just work on making sure that you are trying to learn as much as you can 
at every instance that you're on the podium. And this is difficult because our role as conductors is to be a musical authority for certain things. If you understand where your authority lies, that is to say that you are the person who should know the score globally the best and understand everyone's part within it in a holistic sense, that is the basis of your authority and you can still learn many different things without uh, abdicating that musical authority, without giving it up. You can still know many things and still have lots of other things to know. So the conducting as frequently as you can with as many different groups as you can and being open to suggestions that come is probably the best advice. And then the the other piece of advice I would say is try and have as accurate a picture in your own oral imagination as possible before you stand up in front of a group of people because that will allow you to be able to get right to the heart of what you're not hearing immediately. I once asked Pierre Boulez how he managed to get such incredible clarity after a performance. And in typical fashion, he said, Oh, it's very simple. Uh, you hear what you have in your head and what you want to hear. And when you are in front of the orchestra, you will naturally do all that is necessary in order to hear what you want to hear in your head. And there the clarity comes. And he's right. It's as simple and as complex as that. Um, so you could practically close with uh, Rambo's phrase, C'est aussi simple qu'une phrase musicale. It's as simple as a musical phrase.